Anyway, go to Aaron'sGunshop.com, go to the Facebook page, check it out while you're listening here to Attorney Extraordinaire Benton Ross Watson. Now, Ross, we're here and you wanted to uh you wanted to go over some things. Why don't you why don't you take Yeah, over we had we had on? some we had some overlap last time and I we <coughs> got confused on what we were talking about and I was I was thinking we were talking about and so I kinda I said some things that maybe weren't clear. I also uh I also said one thing that was incorrect. And no. uh, yeah, and so, <laughs> so I mean we get this wrong too, you know. And uh um uh I knew it as soon as I walked out of here I thought, well the general concept came across that it's not not legal in that scenario. So I thought it was good, but then I had people ask me about it. I had uh, another person called me, another client from Houston called me, say they listened and they called me out on it. And so I think I, I need to uh, clear the air on some of the things that we said. I, I, and, and two, we didn't get to go in depth because we, we didn't really, we weren't on the same page. Well, I sit so, here with bated breath. Is that the proper term? I can't wait to hear okay, what you have to say. So I want to start off with uh, with with knuckles. And I, I, we're going to separate these into clear. And generally firearms, we talk about firearms all the time. So I'm not going to talk about when firearms are legal. But generally a firearm in itself Unless you're a felon, mentally defective person, uh, fugitive from justice, under a protective order, things like that, you're going to be able to, to possess and have and, and even transfer usually just a standard firearm like your standard hunting rifle. Uh, even transfers uh, handguns unless you're uh, talking about to a minor or something uh, to that effect. And so we're not going into that. And, and regular knives that are under five and a, a half inches those are there's not going to be a problem with you having that stuff in, in most cases and so uh, that so the three categories are, are illegal what is illegal okay what is what is restricted okay and then what is super restricted oh wow really? okay and so uh, uh, brass knuckles okay um, is going to be anything that's inside the knuckles and I say inside but there's been case case law uh, uh, saying that uh, finding knuckles uh, sufficient evidence of knuckles even when it doesn't go inside the knuckles even when it is some kind of medical, I mean, excuse me, uh, metal or uh, hard hard substance that is surrounding the knuckles. It doesn't act, they actually go in. Uh, there was a judge that actually, I quote the, the court, uh, there this, this was a distinction without a difference uh, to have the, the, the substance go around the knuckles but not go inside the knuckles. So, but we all know what brass knuckles are um, it, it, unless you're living under, you know, a rock or something like that. I mean, and so... Um, that is going uh, to be illegal. I think I had said something about uh, unless it was registered uh, at the, the NFA, the ATF, uh, that's that's not true. I didn't think it could be, and I was telling you I didn't think it was legal for them to have it. I, I actually found a case that uh, the police officer arrested a, uh, a business owner for having uh, brass knuckles, any, any these knuckles out in open display for sale. And so, uh, again... You know, get those at the gun shows at your own risk. I, I mean, that's just, that's the bottom line. But uh, I understand their paperweights. I, I've, I've heard attorneys, and I've and I've I even talked to several attorneys after our show last week, uh, and they said, oh, yeah, they're paperweights, or, you know, they're, they're magnets or something like that. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, but uh, I, you, you deal no, with those no, wait, at your own risk. Didn't we discuss, though, that you could have brass knuckles in your home? You could have a club in your home. It, wouldn't it be safe to say I'm buying this paperweight to, to hold my business papers on the desk, and if something happens, I can utilize it in my home? No, they're illegal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they're illegal. Okay, and and so we're that's what I was going to get. And that also includes armor-piercing ammunition, chemical dispensing devices, tire deflation devices. If you don't know what that means, uh, I think before I went to law school, I was thinking that was just like any, you know any kind of stick that you would slash somebody's tire. I didn't really know what that was, but it's any kind of strip, you know, that you lay down. You see maybe on Dukes a Hazard every once in a while or something where they try to uh, blow out the tires. Police uh, officers uh, use a lot in high-speed chases to get somebody to cut them off on the road instead of trying to ram them with the vehicle. They'll throw that strip out there with the spikes and it'll blow their tires. Okay, or like Batman or something or some kind of superhero that's got a car that you know, sprinkles a star, a yeah, star stars everywhere and blows the tires out. And then you have your uh, improvised explosive devices, your IEDs, things. Obviously, that's going to be uh, illegal in Texas. But, okay, then what is the restricted? So we have clubs, and I think maybe, whoo, I think I messed up on clubs. Uh, uh, I don't, I didn't mess up, but I, 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 I misspoke or didn't make it clear uh, that, uh, so clubs are not, 
all the way illegal. You talked about, can I have this at my house? Yes, you can have a club at your house. You can have a club at your house. So 46.02, you can possess a club on your own premises or premises that you own or the premises that are under your control. Uh, 46.15, the non-applicability provision, uh, says that you can have a club while you're traveling. Uh, you can have a club while you're hunting or fishing or engaged in a sporting activity, okay, or while you're en route uh, from those premises that you're engaged in the activity on. Okay, to a motor vehicle, so you can. It, it, we talked about hog hunting. I think you could, you know, I, I could see a, a district attorney making another argument, but I think uh, I think you could probably have, like you said, anything. You probably have any weapon when you go hog hunting, but I think you can have a club uh, when you go hog hunting, probably to protect yourself or to do, the, and that's probably part of those sporting activities. As and and when you get off of the property, you can probably have it as you walk to your vehicle and then back into your to your house. Okay, and so you have those same exceptions that you would have uh, for um, just firearms, I mean handguns, okay, just handguns in general, that somebody's not a felon, you can uh, have a handgun on your own property that you own or when you're traveling. The, the, the only ambiguity is if you have a license to carry uh, under the non-applicability provisions, okay, it says 4602, which is the, the, the provision that makes clubs illegal, okay, that 4615 says... Uh, 4602, okay, does not apply uh, to a person that's carrying uh, a license to carry under the government code and is carrying a handgun, right? And it's either concealed or they have it in open carry and they're allowed to open carry. Okay, so uh, it does, I, I would think that a, a court probably somewhere would say, well, since it specifically uh, identifies the handgun, they're only talking about able to have uh, the handgun. Okay, but uh, I mean, it, it says what it says. It says 4602. The whole, you know, subsection, the whole section doesn't apply to somebody who's licensed to carry and carrying their handgun. Okay, wait a minute. I'm a little slow. Okay, yeah. you're, you're the educated guy. You got dollar words. You got dollar sentences. Me, I'm a 25 cent kind of guy. So help me out. Everything you just said right there to get me back up to speed. And a lot of people out there may be at the same college I went to, the 25 cent college of learning. <laughs> Wrap that real, wrap it up real quick. What you just said about how it doesn't apply to certain things for certain. You reasons. can have a club in your house. You can have a club in any premises that you're in control of, like maybe your house sitting or something. You can have a club uh, when you're traveling. Okay, uh, traveling is actually a complicated definition, but you can have it if you're going, uh, especially on a vacation. You're going to your uh, family for Thanksgiving holidays. Uh, you could have it. Maybe if you you travel for a living, you travel different places. Okay, not where you live. You're traveling somewhere different. You're going to a different destination. Okay, you can also have it if you're hunting, fishing, or doing some kind of sporting activity. Okay, and you need that that club for the sporting activity. I have a question on the travel part of it. Okay, serious question here. If you're traveling and you're allowed to have this club of whatever it might be in your vehicle, but you can take it from the vehicle to the place of residence or whatever else it is, but you're on the road, you're traveling, and something goes down, it really almost becomes worthless because if I get out of the car and I'm taking this weapon now with me because I'm not going to my destination point, I'm in the middle of somewhere, how does that affect me legally? If you're, if you're, I know it's self-defense, but I'm getting out of the car. Am I saying, okay, I'm getting out of the car. It's a necessity for me to get out of my car. So it puts me in this new world of the law where it says now I can take that club that was legal to be in the car and it's still legal coming outside of the car to defend myself. Is I mean, if you if you had a self defense claim, uh, you could be justified in, in pulling it out of your vehicle for a hundred percent. That's true. I think y your question was to me is about uh, what what do you call a tire thumper? Well, that was just one example. Okay, yeah. um, eighteen wheelers. Well, you, so you see them at Sefco, you buy up this big chunk of hickory and they hit their tires to see if it's uh, yes. Traveling is a complicated definition. Traveling is not going to the gas station. Traveling is not you know. Uh, no, what I'm getting at is though you're traveling and you went to the gas station to refill, somebody's messing with you, you pull the club out of the, the car. And well, you'd be justified at that point. Self -defense, okay, right. self-defense. And, and you'd be justified even under the rule of necessity if you pulled it out for some reason that you thought was okay. necessary. Okay, necessity. okay. and, and uh, also, so um, then the LTC is the ambiguity. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, take comfort in that provision. I would think you would need to read that as you can have your handgun if you have your license to carry on you but I, I do believe it's vague because it says 4602 doesn't apply 
if you have your license to carry and you have your handgun. Doesn't say it don't you know forty six oh two provisions related to the handgun doesn't apply. It so says, what you're saying is if you got if you got your license you got your handgun then you can have your club too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's, uh, I see what you're saying, man. And, you and, can twist and, it around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I mean it says what it says. So take uh, and I always say take solace in the law in the words of the law. So hey, I mean, uh, and I had uh, you know I had a client ask me from uh, Houston, hey, I got nunchucks. What about nunchucks? There are several attorneys who are going to say that nunchucks are a club. And so I took pictures of what uh, the definitions were. And so there's, the club is going to be defined as a blackjack, a nightstick, a, a mace, um, any uh, uh, object that's uh, designed to uh, cause bodily injury. I got the, the now, definition. Now, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to show you pictures. Of course, you can't see the pictures on the radio. Well, you However, can see them on YouTube. But we have the YouTube channels, Aaron, Aaron's Gun Shop YouTube channel, and we're going to have this video up there probably by Tuesday. And we, I'm telling you, you're getting fantastic legal information for free you need to utilize that channel become a subscriber go ahead ross and so so this right here is the blackjack and it's just got a, a braided handle leather it's got a a, a thick uh, top ball basically on the end it's usually got lid with a strap right? yeah yeah and then so then but then we have stuff that uh, uh you might see it almost looks like uh, the 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 end of a bull whip without the without the end whip part uh, uh, you know, on the handle, uh -huh. and so then you've got the 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 other part that is just basically uh, oh, you know why it looks like, like thick a you know thick leather, like a piece of leather. Because some of these, like that that one on the top, show the picture again. In this top picture, you could slip that into a thin pocket, like you've got cargo pants or a exactly. paint, painter's pocket. Exactly. So you don't want this big round uh, club sticking out. It's more flat, but it's got the weight effect to it. Exactly. And so the night sticks to what we see when we see the old uh, civil rights videos, and you see the cops. Uh, police officers on there they've got the the big stick with the handle on the side and they Tom. use it to block and they use it to 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 hit it's, it's got uh, uh many benefits as far as a self-defense perspective tj hooker and, man. yeah and so this so this uh <laughs> so that would be about. that would be this that would be your standard uh night stick that you would think of but uh, then you have your your what's called an, an asp and i i, I really this. kick your ass for it yeah, yes that's the one that's collapsible it looks like a telescope but I think it's uh, named after the, the armament systems and procedures. At least that's what I read. And um, uh, those are called the, the ASPs, that's, uh, the uh, expandable uh, as well. And that's just going to be what you see when somebody kind of, it looks like a just a cylinder, and then they go, whack, they kind of flip it out, and the thing. Uh, There's two different types. There's the metal rod that extends out, and then they got the spring effect. Where spring it effect, kind of right. You. And so it's just a, it's just a long telescope like uh uh, a pipe that's got a, a ball at the end and this is what i was saying is kind of oh, like, like that a, one. and so then we got the the mace uh yeah. and, and the mace is just basically uh, it started off as a and this is the ambiguity so it doesn't define specific kinds of maces right and um but i think maybe the maces are, are are limited to to that definition that are designed made or adapted for the purpose of inflicting serious bodily injury or death by striking the person if you're familiar with Walking Dead, this is going to be Lucille's probably husband here. It's, so yeah, it's just a bat with uh, spikes on the end. Uh, <laughs> and that's what the, the the standard mace is going to be. But then this is where we we had the the question about the the um, the item that you sent to me and asked me if I thought this was legal. I'm not giving an opinion on that one. I think that uh, uh, I, I just would hate to, for somebody to listen to me on that one and get in trouble. But I, I think that uh, it's possible that it's legal. And uh, but it, but there's similarities, and, and so the other one is the ball and the chain on the stick, like what I was talking about here. It's just a stick with the yes, yeah. with a with a chain and a, and, a, and a spiked ball, and then you have um, battle axes. Battle axes basically that also qualify as maces. And where's you the have, tomahawk? You got a picture of the tomahawk? I don't have. I was gonna get the. I thought I thought about that, but I, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to get the like, defamation or something. But then you have a mace. That is more like this. That can be defined maybe That's as like an axe. Ex executioner's axe. This looks like an axe. Okay, but then a mace would also be uh, just a stick like this with a ball Last on the end of it. Okay, and uh, then you could have uh, you could have a. Uh, this is where it bothers me. Okay, because you can have a mace. This basically. Okay. A hammer. So what you're saying is anything. But how do you know if it's designed for that purpose? I mean, a but hammer can be designed for that purpose. But doesn't it say purpose. the intent of the use of whatever it is you have? It's made or adapted or designed for that purpose. I mean, uh, I mean, people have attacked other people with hammers. 
I've had one of those cases. I'm just, I, obviously, obviously, there's got to be some realism to application and execution of the law, and that's why we put faith uh, in our police officers uh, to have a little common sense. Uh, but I, I do want you to know, you know, if you have nunchucks, is it a mace? Because it's kind of like the one with the ball in the chain. I told my buddy, I think you're in a sporting event. I think you're in a sporting event when you go to the, when you go to your dojo. Okay, you're in a sporting event and you're on premises and then you're back in your car and you're back home. And so I think I think you're okay. But when you pull it out at Walmart, okay, because um, you know, and you're not, it's not to defend yourself. I honestly don't get the big deal here. If you got to look, I can whip you with this thing that was twenty dollars and go to jail, but I can shoot you and, and just make you bleed out in the gutter here and say it's self defense. Walk away basically, after, you know, I get no build. But it's just crazy. If you got a license to carry, you would think you should be able to pick a weapon of your choice. So maybe if you got your, your gun, your handgun on you, and you got your license to carry, maybe you can carry your nunchucks. Uh, maybe. Don't do that. I'm pretty I'm good just, with those, too. I have a question, Ross. <laughs> Under what uh, section do, like, whips, bull whips? That's what mean? I was going to talk about. So, I think that falls so under that's club. Like, no, Well, does it? Because I don't shot. think it does. Because I, I, found, I found some cases where the, the whip in itself... Uh, was being questioned about whether it was a deadly weapon or not. And there would be no question if it was a deadly weapon if it qualified for club. So that should have never been an issue with those courts to be asking whether or not it was a deadly weapon. So I do not think, and that's why I said, so I started looking up horse whips. I got all kinds of stuff with horse whips, but I got nothing with horse whips with this definition. So then I started thinking about the, the item that you sent me, and I was thinking, you know, that's more like a whip. Yeah, exactly. It's more like a whip. And so I, I think that that can... That, Probably gonna be You're legal, me on the but edge to legal. But uh, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't. If you get stopped and the police officer arrests you for don't say Benton Watson told me on, this, <laughs> on the show. So, but, but I think, I think it's legal. I think it's gonna qualify as a whip. Okay. And again, we talk about all the time uh, we uh, how innocent. You know, we've had family members or girlfriends or loved ones that uh, you know pull out some kind of illegal weapon and asking an officer, "Can I have this?" You know, and the officer goes, "Just put that away." Uh, I didn't see that. Didn't see that. I, you, you keep that in your car, and they realize that these people, you know, the it's, girls it's don't want to carry a gun. That's it. Okay, but they don't, you know, and they they're trying to do right. Okay, but then so so we those, those are those those are those items. See, that, those just, are legal. You those just said are, something though. You just said something. You got people out there who just want to be left alone. They don't want to break the law and carry a gun. They just want to get somebody away from them. They're not out there maliciously saying, "Hey, when I get a chance, I'm going to go whip you in the back of your head just because I can." They do it. Just don't get near me because if you do, I'm going to whip you to get you away from me. And I think that that item you sent me would be a great yes, it would. Uh, tool. I, I mean, I, I think it would be awesome uh, for, especially for uh, women. I guess I mean, you'll never I, see it coming. Uh, to, running, you know, somebody tried to attack him at night or something. Well, they could just, I mean, I mean, and it wouldn't be. It would allow them to get away, I think. And I mean, I I feel like it would buy time from to pull their phone. I mean, I think it would be a great uh, great tool. And so, I think things like that should be legal. I think that they should be interpreted uh, narrowly uh, for for things like that. These, these these provisions. But that's my opinion. That's my two cents. But ladies and gentlemen, if you want to you know participate in on this conversation, the number here at the studio is two five four six nine seven six six three three. Don't forget, we're simulcasting at KRXT in Rockdale. One oh uh, sorry ninety eight point five. FM in Rockdale, and here, of course, 105.1 FM, the, the ranch. Uh, 254-697-6633 if you got a question for Ross, myself, Chief, or Trek. And, and so that's why I say that knuckles are not legal, period, because it's saying that the, the club is something that uh, falls under the your own premises. is defined, and that leaves out knuckles. So it leaves me to believe it's not does not apply. And um, I was trying in a hurry last week, and I, I misspoke by saying knuckles – could be if they were registered that's not true okay and so um uh, then we have super restricted well handguns i'm not going to talk about that. we talk about handguns all the time we spoke about location restricted knives location restricted knives or anything that's over five and a half inches okay and, and that would fall into the same category sword your sword example yes you can carry swords now but they're location restricted to to certain areas it's basically the same yeah, it's as your handgun requirements right. okay you can't go into schools I can't go to government facilities, sporting events, things like that. Or any place to sign is posted. Okay. Right, okay. And and uh, uh, then we have the super restricted. That's not necessarily illegal in itself, but it's super restricted. And these are any other weapons, okay, uh, machine guns, short barrel firearms, explosives, and silencers. And uh, 
I, I couldn't really give you a good example of, of ALWs, and so I, I, I did a little research. You can go on the ATF website, and they have great, they have awesome pictures of some uh, 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 any other weapon type weapons. And uh, I've got some pictures. Oh, what is that? This is a a, a gun made from a, a Marlboro cigarette pack, uh, as you guys can see. Um, Tell me how that works. I, I have no idea, but uh, I was trying to figure that out. I see a button. I see the uh, the, uh, the the is the bore the, the bore, so, and then so yeah, and the uh, I mean these it's things like are amazing. Like, we we have it's like a zip gun, cool. and we had then we have knuckles. Then we have a, 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 a an AOW with knuckles attached, so we know that this thing is illegal right off the bat. But I just thought this was a really cool uh, cool picture, and you guys can go see these, okay, on the website. I'm not going to show them all. And I, again, I won't go through them all. We have lighter, we have lighter <clears throat> guns. I mean, literally on a on a standard lighter, on a standard Zippo lighter, there was some guns. They they made the uh, the the portion of the Zippo that spits out the flame. Uh, be the bore that the where the where the bullet would come out of. You, you have uh, pin guns on there, just a standard pin that's able to shoot. You have uh, I don't even know what that is. is oh, okay, cane gun? Then, then you have a cane gun, and I thought that was cool. What's wrong with that? If Look, it's, it's got a even, it's, barrel. It's even got a safety. Isn't that cool? And then so, uh, and then we have an umbrella umbrella gun, and it's got the. I'll show this one. So we got the we got the umbrella gun. So I don't understand why that's illegal. If it's an overall, if it's got an overall length and a 16 inch barrel, I don't understand why it's. Uh, well, it's not. Remember, it's a super restricted. It qualifies as an AOW. Whatever. Okay, and so you got to just go and register it with the the under the NFA with the ATF if they'll register it if they will. Uh, and so you're gonna have the trigger right there. I'd be scared to carry that thing. Uh, um, and man, those are cool, and you should go check them out on the ATF website. But uh, uh, those also include, like I said, machine guns, short barrel firearms, explosives, and silencers. We talked about trust last time. I didn't have enough time, and I'm almost out of time today. You guys need to be aware of 41F. Okay, there were there were amendments uh, to how certain things are transferred um, under the trust. Like I said, everybody that's going to possess that gun. Uh, that one of these guns that are NFA regulated or the, under the Gun Control Act regulated, I could name a, a few other statutes as well, but uh, under those that are regulated, you're going to need a name in that application. And by the way, so now you're going to have to probably need to find a dealer if you're just going to buy a new silencer. But if you find a dealer and you're not transferring it between entity and person, uh, you need to do that first. You're going to complete the application forms. It could be Form 1, 4, or 5. Okay, 5 is going to be for your uh, tax exempt status, maybe like a somebody died and you're transferring it through probate or maybe it's a law enforcement seizure uh, seized weapon and they're transferring it to you things like that are tax exempt otherwise you're going to pay the two hundred dollar tax uh okay and uh you're going to send that check in to the atf the the bureau of alcohol tobacco firearms and explosives uh along with your your application forms and now under uh, 41f everybody that's a responsible person and that's pretty much anybody who is going to have a right to receive or possess uh, a firearm that's uh, owned by that trust, okay, are going to have to be designated as a responsible person. It wasn't necessary before 41F, okay, but now that 41F has come out, um, they've got to give the applications, I think they've got to complete uh, Form 5330.20, they've got to uh, give their ID, they got to do the fingerprints, uh, and they've got to do this for every single weapon that comes out, they got to be named in the trust. Be careful about who's doing your trust documents. Okay, be careful about it. Again, you can do the LLC, you can do the corporation. I don't advise you to do those because you got to keep good books. They don't really help you. Uh, sometimes they don't. They usually don't help you uh, as far as transfers are concerned. If it's a regular corporation, you're going to be taxed double, right? The corporation is going to have to get a tax. You're going to have to file tax returns for all of those anyway. You're going to have to pay franchise taxes every year. You're going to have to pay just to set those up, okay, with the state. Uh, you're going to have to send in public information reports. If you're a corporation, you got to send in more than that. Okay, you can do it as a nonprofit too, but those are a, a complicated uh, setup process. Um, you, you're going to have to, uh, if a member dies or leaves or something like that, you're going to have to go through the steps. You're going to have to probably hire an attorney to transfer the shares, transfer their certificates, transfer the ownership. Okay, and they're going to have to work out property, community property issues. It's just a lot easier to do it through a trust. Okay, but now you have more regulations. And a responsible person is going to have to be named. And remember, when you file your applications, the Benton Watson Trust, there's been stories about this, and it causes you administrative problems. If you're naming it the Benton Watson Trust, okay, 
and then you go and file another application named Benton Watson Trust, you're going to now register twice. And if you transfer a firearm right under the wrong name, they're going to think you did you were in violation and you're going to have to go through complicated administrative steps. So please talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. Come talk to me or somebody else. You know, just you need to talk to an attorney, I think, before you probably you, just make sure it's even right. Okay? Now, sometimes, sometimes I just want to live in a cave. You know, <laughs> build a fire, hunt my food, just get out of life. It's just too many complications. Right. I, I want to say this. Uh, you, be careful about who does your trust. I, I know that they're at the gun shows and they're like 150 bucks and that is a good price. Okay. I, I'm more than that. Okay. Uh, most attorneys are going to be more than that, but uh, it needs to be more than a standard form a lot of times. Okay. And you need to have a, an attorney walk you through it if you're going to set it up right. Okay. And so I, before I go, also make sure you get a trust card. I, I give out ID cards. Right uh, when I do my trust, so that it has the names of all the people and it has the names of the guns that are on there. So if a police officer stops you, right, and it has where the documents filed, okay, w when you file it in the date, you can show that if you don't have to carry the trust document, you show the officer, hey, here's my ID card, I'm allowed to have this. Right, I think it's a great idea. Anyway, you guys uh, have a good one. I appreciate. Uh, I heard the 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 stuff come on. Ross, I think I'm supposed to get out of here. It's always. Uh... It's always a pleasure, dude. Yeah. I get worn out when I hear this stuff. I'm just like, man, there's so much information, you know? So I can't thank you very enough. Tell them how to get a hold of you. Uh, uh, Benton Ross Watson here, uh, my primary office location in Cameron, 105 East Main Street, Big Milk County the side. Can't miss it. Uh, I got an office in Houston as well. You can call my office at 254-605-4140 or email me at Benton at Watson.legal. All right. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Talk to you.